A woman asks three men separately which dress they like best out of five she tries on for them. They all pick the same dress as their favorite. She is concerned that they really didn't really look at the dresses but chose randomly. What is the probability that they would all pick the same dress if they were simply making random guesses? Okay, so in this problem, um, it's clearly a probability question, right? It says, what's the probability that they would all pick the same dress? All pick the same dress if they were simply making random guesses. Well, first of all, let's think about this for a second and think about, um, you know, uh, how many people are involved in the problem. It looks like we're looking three, looking for three men to choose among five dresses, and they're going to tell this woman which one they like the best. And wonder what's the probability they all pick the same dress. Let's start out with that statement. Probability, they all pick the same dress. So when I see that right away, I get a little nervous. When I see this all pick the same dress, the reason why I get nervous is this phrase, the same dress. Which dress is that? It's kind of vague, isn't it? And it kind of matters, actually. Um, we want to make sure that we're aware of, um, you know, when it matters and when it doesn't matter, you know. So I'll, I'll pick the same dress, you know, saying the same dress by itself is not, you know, very clear because I might ask, well, which dress is that that they all picked, you know? Of course, you would say, well, it doesn't matter as long as they all pick the same one. But it's going to matter because, you know, if I start to write this problem out, I'm going to say, well, let's see, you know, there are three men choosing. So I'll draw three places to represent the three events, the first man's choice, the second man's choice, the third man's choice. And so if I do that, when I go to talk about what this first space represents, I get stuck, right? Because I say, hmm, this is the probability they all pick the same dress. Well, you know, if I knew what he picked, it'd be easy. The other guy has to pick the same one he picked, right? And that'd be easy. I could say, well, how many dresses is that? Well, he only picked one dress, so there'd be one dress out of five, right? The next guy picked the same dress as this guy, or this guy, so it'd be one dress out of five. But this guy, you know, um, does it matter what he picked? Well, here we could actually say that it doesn't actually matter what he picks. But it does matter what we put there, though. We can't just put one-fifth. A lot of people say, well, gee, you know, they're all going to pick one dress that they like the best, and they all have to pick the same one. That one dress is one out of five, right? Five possible options, one dress that's their favorite, so one-fifth is the probability they pick that dress. But that assumes that you know which dress they pick, right? Because, you know, the question is, how many ways can they do this? How many different ways can they all pick the same dress? Well, lots of ways, right? I mean, for example, they could all piss, pick dress A, right? Let's assume that there are five dresses in question, which is what they say in the problem. Let's call the dresses A, B, C, D, and E. They could all pick dress A, and that could be how they all pick the same dress. And the probability of that occurring is, you know, one-fifth of the chance the first guy picks dress A, because there's one dress A out of five total dresses. The chance that they all pick dress B is also one-fifth, you know? So, in other words, if I wanted to figure out the probability that they all pick the same dress, I could say, well, that could happen how? It could happen by them all picking dress A, or they all pick dress B, or they all pick dress C, or they all pick dress D, or they all pick dress E. Those words, or in between, mean we should add, which means we actually have to add together the probability that everyone picks dress A, the probability that everyone picks B, the probability that everyone picks C. And if you think about that, then you say, well, geez, you know, that's a lot of different scenarios. That's five scenarios, right? And each one of those scenarios is one-fifth times one-fifth times one-fifth. The reason why it's that is because there is one dress A, for example, out of five dresses, and if they all have to pick that one, it would be a one-fifth chance that all three pick them. If you're talking about uh, dress B being the one they all pick, again, there's one Dress B out of five dresses, one out of five, one out of five. Again, it's one-fifth for all of them. How many different iterations of that is there? There'll be five different lists of one-fifth, 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 one-fifth. If we added it all together, we would get our answer. There's another way you can do this problem, though. The other way you can do it is to say, look, it doesn't matter what the first guy picks. He can pick anything he wants, right? He can choose any of the five dresses, because he's the first guy to pick. If he was making a random guess, you know, one of the probability all end up picking the same dress, the first guy can pick whatever he wants. He essentially has five dresses to choose from out of five total dresses. In other words, he can't get the problem wrong. He can't pick the wrong dress because no one else has picked yet. Now, what happens after that, though, is whatever he decided to pick, let's say he picked dress C as his favorite, everyone else has to choose that same dress in order for them to all pick the same dresses. 
So that means the second guy doesn't have all the choices that the first guy had. If he's going to pick the same dress, he's got to pick the dress that this guy chose. That means he can only choose the one dress that this guy chose out of the five available options to him. So the chance he picks the same dress as that guy, one-fifth. This guy has to pick the same dress that both of these guys picked. Again, that's only one dress out of the five available options to him. And if you work this out, it will work out to be the correct answer. And of course, you end up with 1 over 25 when you do that. That's because this is 1, right? 1 times anything is itself. Then 1 times 1 is 1. 5 times 5 is 25. You get 1 25th. That's actually mathematically equivalent to the first way I described doing it, but it's a lot simpler, right? So again, it works this way because we say, hmm, the first guy can pick anything he wants as long as the others follow after that. The most common wrong answer I see in my classes is people say one-fifth times one-fifth times one-fifth. But again, that's assuming that this first guy had to pick a specific dress and there was only one dress for him to choose. But when he first chooses, it doesn't matter. If it's going to be a random guess, right, he can pick anything he wants. It's the others that have to follow after that. So the probability they all pick the same dress by making a random guess is actually 1 over 25. And that's the solution. It's kind of a tricky problem, right? In fact, I would say that most people when they encounter this problem get it wrong the first time. They make that wrong answer of 1 fifth times 1 fifth times 1 fifth. This is why we do problems like this in class and in the homework because we want to garner experience. So that way we're less likely to commit that mistake in the future.